In the last video, I showed you how to measure the water level in your tank using an ultrasonic distance sensor with Raspberry Pi and monitor the tank level on a web interface. However, that required setting up a web server and managing the server side code to display the water level in your tank. In this video, I will introduce a web service using which you can access your online widget created for this purpose. And it does not require you to manage any server side code. You can simply upload the sensor data to the widget and it will respond to your data. I will demonstrate the whole process in action in this video. Using the web interface, you can configure multiple widgets which can connect to their respective data sources and provide real-time status on a single dashboard. So let's get started. Open a browser and type the following URL. Sign up and fill up the basic details. Once you do that, an authentication token is sent on your email. We will see how to use that later in this video. Just begin by logging in with your credentials and click on the water tank option. This is your brand new widget. Go ahead and customize it by entering your tank dimensions. High and low trigger means that your Raspberry Pi can actuate predefined GPIO pins when the level reaches these values. You can see the dimensions and triggers labeled on the widget. That means the widget is all set. Now you need to set up your Raspberry Pi to send data to the widget. For that, you can read the detailed instructions here. I am going to cover all these steps in this video. Coming to Raspberry Pi. Open the Chromium browser. Go to the home page and access the GitHub link. From there, download the source code. The code will be downloaded in the downloads folder. Extract it and access the files. Here you will see the file helloworld.py where you need to paste your authentication token. You can find this authentication token in your email which you provided while creating your account. So access your mail, copy the token and paste it in the python file. Save it and you are ready to test the communication with your online widget. For that we can use this sample python file. It does not require any sensor to be interfaced. It is just a test file that generates a random value and uploads it to the server. Open the terminal and get ready to run this file. Now we are going to see the interaction between Raspberry Pi and the online widget. When you run this file, data gets uploaded and the server responds with the dimensions of the widget. These details are saved locally on Raspberry Pi. During next upload cycles, the server simply responds with success message and the widget responds to the data. Now, Interface the sensor with Raspberry Pi as per this connection diagram. For this demo, I made these connections and placed the sensor on top of a jar which simulates a water tank. These LEDs connected to GPIO pins get actuated when the water is below low level trigger or above high level trigger. Now let's run the main file sensor.py. It takes 10 readings quickly, calculates the average and uploads this value to the server. Since the jar is empty, this distance value simply denotes the height of the jar. So let's configure our widget as per the dimensions of this jar. Now when we run this script again, the server responds with the dimensions of the jar, which gets saved locally. Now on, whenever the script runs, it uploads the sensor value to the server. It's time to run this script automatically every one minute. For that, you can create a cron task by running this shell script. 
you can confirm the cron task entry by running this command. So everything is set to see the whole setup in action. Since the cron task in Raspberry Pi runs at an interval of one minute, I have overlaid this clock for reference. Whenever the seconds hand of this clock crosses 12, the Python script is executed automatically and the data is uploaded. The blue LED is glowing because the water level is below the low level trigger value. As I pour water in the jar, the level rises and the same is reflected on the online widget. The sensor correctly measures the water level. We can see the sensor reading matches with the actual scale. When the water level goes above the low level trigger, the blue LED gets turned off. As I continue pouring the water in it, the level goes above the high level trigger value, which makes the red LED glow. But let's say I want to actuate this LED on a higher level. I can do that by going to the widget settings and changing the high level trigger value. During the next upload cycle, these new settings are downloaded to the Raspberry Pi and the script turns off the red LED as the water level is below the new high level trigger value. Again, the scale shows that the sensor is accurately measuring the distance from the water surface. If I add more water and the water level reaches this new high trigger value, the red LED glows again. You can control the water inlet and outlet of your tank through the water solenoid valves. These valves can be simply interfaced with Raspberry Pi using relays. And you can actuate these relays using the high and low level trigger information. You can also control a heavy duty water pump and maintain the level in your tank automatically. Whatever you make, let me know in the comments below. More than one widget can be set up by using this setting. Configure the new widget as explained earlier. These two widgets will receive data from two different sensors. Just ensure that the sensor code in the API hello world.py matches the sensor code on the widget. Similarly, you can add up to four widgets. So go ahead and make your IoT project with this online tool and monitor your sensor data from anywhere in the world. Stay tuned as I plan to add more widgets in the future to interact with more IoT boards and sensors. Thanks for watching.